How's it going guys, Jay Siemens here, and I'm getting pumped for ice fishing season and excited for Christmas. Christmas is just around the corner. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like that yet because it's been pretty mild, but it's coming. And with that is Christmas gifts. And I know it can be pretty tough to shop for the outdoorsmen, ice fishermen, fishermen in your family. So I'm gonna give you guys some ideas that I think are maybe a little bit unique. Sometimes it's tough buying, you know, specific rods and reels, electronics, that sort of stuff. So I've tried to think about some things that maybe aren't quite as obvious. Um, I did a video like this two years ago. I tried to swap up most of the items from then. And the other thing to keep in mind, the reason I'm doing this even earlier is, as you probably know, supply chain stuff is completely messed up. Stuff is selling out incredibly quick. So my advice, order early so you're not looking at a bunch of sold out items when Christmas comes around. But I got a list of about, I think it's about 13 items. And uh, as well, I'm gonna include some um, situational footage if I have it for some of these items, um, just so you can see you know, how they are useful out in the field. All right, number one, and this one, if you don't buy anything else, you should definitely think about number one, even if it's a gift for yourself, and that is booking a fishing trip somewhere. The last two years, outfitters, as you probably know, have been crushed. A lot of flying outfitters haven't even, you know, ran trips. Uh, a lot of the local ones, even the drive-to places have been hurting. So, a couple options, you know, you can rent a stay to lodge, you can book a guide for a couple days, you can book, you know, an all-inclusive trip to some fishing lodge. As far as even you could book, uh, you know, book a shack, a, a, a snow bear rental, anything like that to put back into the tourism industry. Because a lot of these are my friends, They've been hurt in the last couple of years and I think now's the time that hopefully we've been saving up and can go on that trip because gear is just gear. Um, for me, you know, a trip, those, those memories last forever. All right, next on the list, someone that is just getting into ice fishing and maybe doesn't even have some of the basics. One of the most important things for ice fishing is something to be able to cut a hole with, an auger. And you know, maybe this person has a hand crank auger but they're looking to get something motorized this is probably your cheapest option to get into the motorized market. This is a pistol bit by Eskimo. This is the eight inch version. And as you can see, there is a drill attachment on the end. This is not the correct drill for this situation. Um, before you buy this, I'd make sure that you have a drill that's suitable. But the thing is, if you have uh, you know, a friend or a family member that wants to get an auger and happens to be a contractor or just someone that has you know, a nice drill, it doesn't have to be a, a crazy drill, but I'll, I'll link a list below of drills that work. And basically now, you can use your cordless drill as an auger. Pistol bit is, uh, it's amazing. It's so convenient. And if you have the drill already, then I think you can get the bit for about 200 bucks. All right. A lot of places that you fish, you can use two lines. I think in Wisconsin, you can use three lines. A device to use your second line is something that'll come in very handy. It'll often, you know, can double your fish catch. So we've got two options here. This is kind of unique twists on your traditional tip up. You got the iFish Pro, this is version 2.0. So it's insulated on the bottom. I'll include some clips of both of these iFish Pro. You use your rod um, and it free spools it when a fish takes the bait. And then you've got the jaw jacker, which uh, isn't legal everywhere, but this will be an automatic fish hook setting device. Depends on what you're fishing for, which one you're gonna want. You know, if you do a lot of big pike and lake trout, I would probably favor the iFish Pro. If you do a lot more stock trout, maybe perch, walleye, smaller walleye, this, this, could be what you want. You know, I have both or situations for both. Maybe buy the person in your life both. But anyways, those are two very cool items to have on the ice. Next on the list is a little something called Catch and Cook. What is Catch and Cook, you might ask? Well, it's actually my own fish batter company. Me and my buddy Josh McFadden started this company. We really only launched it like a year ago. It's been a passion project for us. Uh, we've got a number of items now. We've got original, we've got spicy, we've got a lineup of spices. So we've been putting together some bundles on our website and uh, probably the thing that we're most proud of that we just released is the knife. This is a folding fillet knife, something that I've wanted for a long time. Um, as a guy that loses a lot of stuff, I'm always losing my sheath. So it's a folding fillet knife, super sharp. It's, it's, you know, a good length. You can, you know, use it for a lot of hunting applications. I mean, I'm cutting fish most of the time with it. But um, there she is, has the catch and cook emblem on it. And you know what? I'm gonna give away a bundle to you guys. If you comment, I want catch and cook below, I'm gonna give away one Christmas bundle to one of you guys that commented. Anyways, if you wanna support this channel, buying some catch and cook is a great way to do it. You know, for someone that has everything, I think, you know, everyone uses fish batter, everyone can use a new fillet knife. 
Next on the list, we have this little adapter by Eskimo. And this is gonna help you put your pegs in on your ice shack. So if you have a drill along anyways, if you have a pistol bit, you attach it into your drill. And this will screw your pegs in to hold your shack down, whether it's a pop-up, a flip over, if you have those pegs, sometimes they can be pretty cumbersome to drill into the ice. This makes quick work of it. I think this thing's like 20 bucks. All right, moving on. We got a boot dryer. Yes, this is a, a kind of a clunky thing to bring along on fishing trips, but out of all the lodges and accommodations I've been to, there's a, almost always a shortage of, you know, vents to dry your boots. I know vents don't always work the best, right? Or, or like a, a register or something. So this boot dryer has four hoses on the end. So you can do two sets of boots. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. I think it was like 60 or 70 bucks. I'll, I'll link all these things below. I, I always bring it along on multi-day trips because there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than wet boots. I'm telling you. Moving on. Look at all this lure making stuff. As you can tell, I have a bit of addiction to lure making. You can see a lot of my soft plastic molds, lead molds. Um, I've done a bunch of work with do it over the years. I, I started making lures uh, long before I was shooting stuff for them. And it's, it's just a hobby. I don't know, it, it feels like I don't have a lot of hobbies these days aside from fishing, but like lure making is a hobby. Um, it's, it's not a, a business by any means for me, but it's something that I enjoy doing. As you can see, I have so many different molds, so many different options, depending on what you want to fish for. Like this is a three inch swim bait mold. Um, if you're fishing for bass, walleye, that's something that you can go through a ton of. And to have that one mold that you buy for 50 or 60 bucks can save you hundreds of dollars in baits. Uh, they have a kit that comes with, you know, a container of plastic, some colors, uh, the injector, and then you can buy one mold. So you can get into that for fairly cheap. Another option is, you know, melting down your old plastics. I'll do that a lot as well. I'll keep my plastics from the year. I'll melt them down. So you don't even necessarily need to buy plastic. Um, but I just think it's a fun hobby, something you can get into. And if you have a few specific baits you use all the time, it'll save you money in the long run. All right, we're, we're nearing the end. This one's kind of goofy as well. See if I can lift it up. Oh, wow, that's heavier than I thought. We got, oh wow, it's dripping. We got a dehumidifier here, which is kind of random. People think that you only need your dehumidifier in the summertime. Uh, my dehumidifier runs not all the time, but pretty close to all the time in my garage. Garage, you guys are gonna give me a hard time about that. If you have a space that you're, you know, parking your sled, parking your ice shack, and it's, it is great for it to melt, but if you have that dehumidifier, it just sucks the moisture out. Like I'll just fill up buckets and buckets of water in the winter time when my stuff is thawing out. So dehumidifier is great. I run it all summer in the boat to get my boat all dry and suck all the moisture out of the shop. And then as well in the winter, it's great for ice fishing stuff. All right, next up, we got a vacuum sealer. You can use this for vacuum sealing food, obviously. I use it for bait all the time because Sometimes you catch your own bait and you want to bring it back. And if you try wrapping it and, you know, putting it in a Ziploc bag, it'll get freezer burnt and the bait just kind of gets shot right away. So, I mean, if you're spending like $10 a bait, $6 a bait for some of these Cisco's, vacuum sealing it, you know, lets it last way, way longer, protects it from freezer burn. And as well, if you're keeping fish, keeping fillets, vacuum sealing it is good. I, I have this weird obsession with vacuum sealing things. All right, next up, we got the Dakota Lithium Power Box. This essentially is a lithium battery in a box with some accessories. This is a 10 amp hour, 12 volt battery. So if you have, you know, a, a conventional flasher, you know, a, a FL20 or a, a Hummingbird Ice 55, something like that, this is gonna be the size of battery that's gonna fit in that case. So, I mean, in the summertime, I often use this for camping. There's a cigarette lighter, there's a USB port, it's got lights on the end. And then in the winter time, if you want, if you don't wanna bring this bundle along or if you don't need it and you, you want that battery to you know, double the runtime of your graph, then you just pull that battery out and you know it's not much extra to get the casing and then you have it for summertime trips. Next on the list, this is a duplicate from two years ago, but this is a Garmin in reach. And I will just keep preaching this thing until the end. Maybe it's not as relevant if you live in an area where you're always in cell service, but there's so much of the time where I'm on the fringe of cell service or let's say my phone gets really cold and it dies. And this is my safety. This gives Sam so much assurance that I'm gonna be able to contact her no matter what happens. And essentially what this is, is um, this can send and receive satellite messages. So I use my phone via Bluetooth. It hooks up to this. I can send messages through it or I can type messages. There's only a couple buttons. This is the, uh, the mini. But I pay a subscription, I think I pay $20 a month. The unit's around 300 to 350 bucks. 
This comes with me everywhere. I often keep it on my breast pocket so it's close. There's an SOS button on the side you can see there. If I flip that open and I press that button, that's that's like calling the military to come rescue me or somebody in a helicopter or plane. Like no matter where I'm at, I'm one button away from getting help. And that, that just gives me the assurance that I'm gonna be safe out on the ice. I know lures are completely overwhelming. I, I mentioned that already that it's like, how do you know what to buy for people? Jigging spoons are a pretty safe bet, no matter you know what you're fishing for. This is the Frostbite Dinner Bell Jigging Spoon. Uh, there's three sizes, they're small, medium, large. The small I would use for stock trout, walleye, perch. The medium you could use for big perch walleye and then you got the big one that I'd be using more so for lake trout and really big walleyes. Um, you really can never have too many jigging spoons and uh, I always got a couple in my tackle box. All right so we've covered you know quite a few different things. Now I'm kind of shifting gears a little bit but not really. If the person in your life has you know all the fish and tackle they could ever need, they have a dehumidifier, they have a vacuum sealer, well maybe they've shown interest in filming their fishing trips. Uh, whether you want to start a YouTube channel or just have these memories to look back on for years, uh, I, I love, you know, filming my trips. I get asked so often, what camera should I buy, Jay? And it's like, well, whatever you can afford. But a GoPro is such a good option for just price and it's weatherproof, it's waterproof, you can do underwater stuff with it. And this new GoPro, the GoPro, this is the 9, I think there's a 10 since already. But the cool thing about this, it's got a screen on the front now. And for holding up fish, for like doing selfie type stuff, like what I'm doing with this camera right now, it's amazing because I know what's in frame. You don't need to get the latest GoPro, even I would say like starting anywhere from GoPro number four and up. The difference between GoPro four and the GoPro like seven or eight isn't really that much. You know, in some of the newer ones, you do get the front facing screen. I, I tell people again and again, I'm like, if you wanna start making videos, a GoPro can do everything you need. And that leads us to our last piece, if you have a GoPro or you're filming with your phone, filming with whatever camera you have access to, an audio source is so important. I'm gonna show you guys, you know, the audio off the GoPro in this room compared to the audio on the Tascam mic that I'm wearing. I'll, I'll switch back and forth as I'm talking. But I'm wearing this little body pack right here. It's in my pocket. I've been wearing it as a backup mic. This thing is called the Tascam DL10R. I think they're around 250 bucks. This thing records to a micro SD card. Um, I would say on one AAA, it runs about six hours. If you want to step your game up to the next level, no matter what camera you're filming with, get the mic, I clip it on. That's the beauty is because this GoPro, as soon as the wind hits it, the, the audio becomes unusable. But you clip this little mic on, it's a little more work to sync it up later, but instantly you have professional quality audio. I think that's pretty much all I got. Hopefully those ideas make your Christmas shopping a little bit easier. I'm gonna, the links below are gonna be Amazon affiliate links, so I get a little bit of a kickback if you guys use those links. Um, I think that's it. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. I know it's still a ways away, but don't procrastinate on the shopping like I probably will. Um, hopefully these uh, couple ideas help you out. Thanks for watching.